Dear colleagues, friends, it's been several years since Mikhail Kachanovich has left us, left us, and I'm really deeply thankful to the organizers who stage these conferences as a tribute to Professor Gershanovich, which focus on treatment of solid tumors. And I was asked to speak on the Hodgkin's lymphoma, but later on uh, this was amended to non-Hodgkin's lymphomas as well. You know, of course, that principal methods of combined therapy are surgery, chemotherapy, and radiology, radiation therapy. The specialists that are involved with lymphomas and other hematological uh, uh, neoplasms, of course, chemotherapy plays a great part. But in spite of many new drugs now being available, the main problem with us remains the resistance of the tumor to treatment and also what is uh, very sad that the drugs used for chemotherapy, they act not on the tumor alone, but they are harmful for quite a lot of other organs and systems of the body. In recent years, other methods of therapy have become available. For instance, immune therapy, because it doesn't breed resistance to surgical and uh, radiation therapy. Uh, immune therapy may be either targeted using monoclonal antibodies uh, and inhibitors of uh, immune set points and also attempts at raising the immune status of the patient. Today, we have amassed quite a lot of experience in using immune therapy in treatment of even solid tumors like sarcomas. The main means that is used in immune therapy are monoclonal antibodies. And it looks like they will still play uh, monoclonal, will play an important role in the treatment. And we will have uh, monoconjugates, which will also be combined with targeted drugs aimed at destroying destruction of the human. 
both bone marrow and blood when used for transplantation uh, use stem cells uh, which are instrumental in producing blood. Uh, these methods are widely used in many clinics and in many countries. And uh, the main method is the so-called CAR-T therapy. Success in treatment of tumors has been achieved in treatment of a hematological system, blood producing system, and this is easy to explain because the mechanism of their action is deeply explored from the stem cells to the differentiation into blood cells and platelets. We know about various structures, receptors, which are on the lymphoid cells and uh, which can be used for delivery of drugs to the site. Uh, CD19, CD20, CD22 uh, this cells are instrumental in delivering monoclonal antibodies uh, to the site. Historically, the experience was amassed when uh, monoclonal antibodies, uh, which uh, run counter to CD20, and uh, quite a number of other antibodies was synthesized, which have even better activity in their mechanism. And this, uh, and this is this mechanism is now much more complex than that which we had with uh, rituximab, and uh, here now you see the classic picture when quite a number of patients in many cancer centers uh, were studied as to their reaction to rituximab and other monoclonal anti-CD20 bodies. Quite a lot of indicators have improved practically for all lymphomas, except for that, for the Hodgkin's lymphoma. For Hodgkin's lymphoma, we have another marker, that is CD30. And when we work on monoclonal antibodies, which would be targeted to CD30, uh, this work was in prog has been in progress for many years, and now uh, the way uh, to implant a very powerful drug to the ant monoclonal antibody which would be targeted to CD30, uh, was successfully achieved. 
for the last four to five years, we've been using uh, this drug. Uh, we started with clinical trials, uh, and when we opened the testing period, the trial period, we found uh, that this new drug, Brentoximab, was available. Uh, well, the patients we have, they have a very long case story who have been treated by different methods before Brentoximab appeared. And you see that after Brentoximab was administered, we found that the response was absolutely great with 20% full remission. Only very few patients uh, showed a resistance to Brentoximab, and the survival rate has become much higher. However, if you see the curve on the right hand side, uh, Brentuxibab unfortunately does not guarantee full care, and there is recurrence of lymphomas after a certain period of remission. So, Brentuxibab alone is uh, not sufficient, something else might be needed. So, the question is whether it is possible uh, to improve the results using some amendments or changes in the first line of treatment, for instance, using bleomycin together with brentaximab uh, or vice versa. It looks like we have to be oriented toward response uh, governed therapy, which can be checked with PET or CT, PET or computer tomography. Depending on the stage of the disease, after the patient has received one or two stages of treatment. On the first line of treatment, the first line of therapy, Brentoximab uh, didn't show much uh, progress with the lymphoma, but the improvement was 5 to 10 percent. Uh, however, uh, these figures didn't find support in European studies. Uh, while with us, the cost of treatment went much higher. So we thought it inexpedient to use Brentaximab for the first stage of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. The overall response the incidence of remissions with certain lymphomas, uh, uh, most aggressive ones, is uh, quite good. And now we should think not only about using Brentoximab for Hodgkin's lymphoma, but also using it together with chemotherapy uh, for other lymphomas. It looks like it is 
This combined therapy is indicated with bretaximab necessarily included in the program. Another thing I wanted to speak about, uh, there was a discovery which is one of the most important ones. Uh, we, uh, we have found a system of control over the immune system. Uh, this is the immune control checkpoints which were discovered uh, thus winning the Nobel Prize in medicine for 2018. It showed uh, also that now it looks like the same therapy can be used also for solid tumors. I'm not going to speak about the mechanism of the therapy, but tumors result in the collapse of the immune system uh, up to a certain period of time. This process of deterioration of immune system can be controlled, but sooner or later the immune cells get tired and they stop working like they should when the patient is healthy or at the early stage, uh, early stage of the illness. Today in Russia, CTA and other checkpoints like ligands, inhibitors, and inhibitors of the fourth molecule, they also can be used. However, their high cost precludes us from using us on a wider scale. Uh, but might be sooner or later the situation will change and we'll be able to administer nivolumab together with brentaximab and so on. Practically all patients with lymphomas showed good response uh, uh, to nivolumab, while with uh, solid tumors, the effect was not so pronounced. However, uh, uh, cancer of the bladder and of the head and neck are not so, do not look so optimistic. This is why oncologists are now intensively studying the processes which take place uh, uh, in the human body with use of this checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see uh, how we can evaluate or predict the response to immune therapy, the number of gene mutations, and it depends on the expression of PD ligand in the tumor cells. Uh, the methods work, but so far uh, 
it looks like we'll have to open new laboratories to study empirically these medication, these drugs in the labs, uh, both for, uh, for Hodgkin's lymphoma and other lymphomas. The matter is that that ligand, uh, PD-1, it uh, is expressed not only with Hodgkin's lymphoma, but with other lymphomas and other uh, solid tumors. We found the location, the site, where the gene of PD-1 ligand is located. With other lymphomas, this is less pronounced than in solid tumors. So we need a deeper exploration uh, and the methods which we use in our clinic uh, can be seen here. With checkpoint inhibitors, sometimes we encounter not only uh, progress in the treatment, but the so-called pseudo-progress. Uh, because the results may seem very positive uh, initially, but the mass of the tumor consists not only of the tumor cells, but there are also quite healthy cells as well. Uh, monocytes, uh, fags, uh, platelets, and so on. Putting a long story short, this can be characterized uh, like this. We have a method that makes it possible to distinguish between pseudo-progress and progress. This is biopsy, but it is not always possible. Uh, when it cannot be applied in a non-destructive way. Another option is uh, to sit quietly waiting. Uh, and now, as we have amassed certain experience, we can use it. The resistant forms of the disease uh, which do not succumb to treatment in a traditional way, but the patients uh, still come uh, and what we found that a very high frequency of response is astonishing. Though it is not an indicator of progress with Hodgkin's lymphoma, the patients usually live long enough. But if we use checkpoint inhibitors, 90% of patients uh, become much better. And however, the drug itself is expensive, and the company that developed it recommends higher doses. So all this uh, prompted us to study whether the drug is effective in smaller doses. So we have 
substantially reduced the amount of drug. And we found that the PD-1 receptors with lower doses of the drug uh, the low dose uh, did not work because the receptors were already occupied uh, by other genes. And we found that a lower dose of 40 milligrams of the drug is practically of the same efficiency as a higher dose. With certain patients, even one dose of the drug resulted in disappearance of the tumor. These are the results of our study of NIY040, but the drug is expensive all the same. Might be we could stop uh, treating some uh, patients who have who are in remission and who are in remission for a sufficiently long period of time in order so that we could continue with our studies. And you can see that out of 23 patients, 13 patients had the remission. So this trick, uh, this is another vote, another ballot cast in favor of our new antibody, but it is not sufficient uh, for treating the tumor. We have decided to add bendamustin. Then, in fact, um, it stimulates the immune system, and you see it works in some patients. Yeah. In fact, uh, the most resistant patients responded to this treatment. Uh, it uh, it works in combination now with bendamustin. Next, a regimen. Um, set up been containing been the mustine gives me the bean rituximab and it this combination also works we mean treating resistant patients and this picture shows yeah of course you know it's not satisfactory but in hopeless patients, you know, it's better than nothing. You know, I'm not going to go into details as far as complications is con are concerned. You know, but all of those uh, have autoimmune nature. Fortunately, we didn't see any fatal uh, complications. Mostly, uh, we, you know, correct the situation, control it with the corticosteroid mm, and the checkpoint uh, in inhibitors resistance is not a counterindication uh, counterindication for uh, resuming therapy in case of need cell immune therapy it's out of uh, autologous transplantation, you know. I have to skip this topic, unfortunately, due to time constraint. But look at what's going on after transplant and um, Hodgkin lymphoma, the patient who didn't respond to either uh, rituximab or other antibodies, monoclonal. But, you know, they, they achieved remission. Mm. 
with, despite their frequent relapses. Basically, we do um, we did research um, in adults and children with the same outcome. You know, we use these medications as uh, preparatory treatment, as a bridging treatment. That's actually our first cohort, French cohort, that stopped. Mm, stopped, in fact, uh, their research because of the uh, graft versus host uh, reaction, and other authors didn't pay enough attention. So we, in fact, um, enrolled 20 patients and basically figured out that it was possible to avoid severe graft-to-host um, reactions, which works very well. Basically, we confirmed date of that author, and we use this combination. Uh, Non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Transplantation works. But look at the patients. They are not naive, by all means. They'll do, receive many uh, drugs and uh, in fact experience cumulative toxicity prior to their transplantation. What other therapies are recommended? With skipping uh, recurrences, brituximab uh, works well, and the checkpoint uh, inhibitors uh, are efficacious. Uh, they are not as dreadful. Yes, uh, there used to be a plus a donor lymphocyte transplant or infusion. It works in one third of patients, but it works in non Hodgkin lymphoma and other diseases, even, even though it's better in myeloproliferative diseases. Uh, we could spend a lot of time on this table. Autologous transplantation, mon simple monoclonal antibody. Well, what are cons and pros? Uh, they all have advantages and disadvantages. But you know what? It's the you know it's a good idea to combine them. You know, one can keep discussing this. Driving them. But what are your butt and never map will become most prevalent? Carcat and transplantation are the most sophisticated techniques. That's why this. You know, those uh, therapeutic approaches are very promising. They have future. Here, um, um, you see the sensitivity of various lymphomas to uh, immunotherapy. Uh, and this, you are aware of these combinations. You know, it's not just like try and error uh, approach. It's a hard work, multi-year work. So that's our team, our doctors, our employees, and the lymphoma group comprising Natalia Mikhailova and Kirill Lebedev, all who played pivotal role, have been playing the role in our study. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, your brilliant presentation. Please, questions. Paris. Sergey, due to uh, some reasons, had to go to the governor's office. Okay. Jeans. You mentioned gene therapy. Yeah. And uh, well, what are the 
Окей, Сергей. Сергей's presentation was supposed to be that was supposed to be made. Um, it was gene and um, cell therapy. Okay, I will fill out this gap. Okay, transplantation is the same cell therapy. No, basically, it's just a conventional method that is, uh, you know, reimbursed. It uh, varies, you know, the amount of reimbursement varies from one country to another. Well, usually insurance companies, you know, reimburse it. And it will be playing a role for a long period of time. But transplantation is feasible only uh, when we have remission or a minimum uh, tumor mass. But in some settings, like lymphoma, um, acute ALM, you know, we cannot uh, reduce, uh, do like tumor reduction even with antibodies. <laughs> and it plays a very important role. Because this method, this technique works despite, you know, the large mass, tumor mass, like lymphocytes. Why do we use donor lymphocytes? We had a boy from Leningrad, Oblast, and he, he underwent the transplantation in Great Britain. And we used lymphocytes and interleukin, and after the first injection, you know, started going down. Lymphocytes started going down, and we appreciated, you know, power of immunotherapy. Kata is also very powerful powerful therapy for super resistant tumors. But it seems to me that the developers, Carter developer, uh, you know, it's, we understand that it's like a, only child. And we actually treat many international patients first and foremost from China. So we use transplantation, etc., etc. If you, let's take a look at the five-year survival after cardiac therapy. Despite the fact that the first girl who received this uh, treatment in Pennsylvania is still in remission, but you know, the curve is going down. And look uh, at transplantation curve and cardiac therapy curve. You know, they are almost identical recurrences, recurrences, but it does not uh, belittle the significance of cardiac therapy. And of course, we would like to have both. <sighs> yeah, well, it, it, there are cons and pros, but again, we can combine both. I'm going to sim I'm simplifying the situation. You know, in the future, uh, we will be using cells that act against against uh, tumor, but uh, that are produced within the body. Cartilage also has a future, but number of patients who cartilage are uh, indicated um, decreased. Plus, you know, it it uh, it may be used for solid tumors oh, as well, and bite also is very promising. As for gene therapy, I don't want to, you know, deviate from mainstream. But Marina Popova is here. Uh, she likes actually gene editing, oh, well, in a setting of HIV. It also has future, but I think 
we have to be guided, we have to use monoclonal antibodies, chemotherapy, checkpoint inhibitor, and transplantation. I mean, the clinicians must understand me in anticipation of CAR therapy. It will be made available soon. And in fact, I know. Oh, we stay in touch with our colleagues from trans uh, in Moscow, like um, Petrov Institute. We made an agreement, and I believe that uh, by the end of 2019, we'll get that you know CAR T therapy, and uh, that's our path. We would decided not to get involved. We are waiting, waiting for the results to be yielded by Moscow, for, by Moscovites.